Well, you guys have been asking for more ST content, so we're gonna load you up this week. Now, we all know the Focus ST is an excellent handling car right out of the box. Well, today we're gonna improve body roll by installing a set of white line adjustable sway bars. This white line sway bar kit includes direct replacement sway bars for the front and rear of your 2013 through 2018 Focus ST. They're going to be 24 millimeters front and rear, which is several millimeters larger than the factory one. On top of that, they are adjustable. You have two different holes to dial in the bar itself, along with adjustable end links to dial it in for your ride height. And again, this will be direct replacement for your factory bars and all hardware needed for installation is included. For this installation, we'll need a lift and pole jacks or a jack and jack stands, half inch torque wrench, 3 8 ratchet, at least a 12 inch extension, 21 millimeter socket, 18 millimeter socket, 15 millimeter socket, 13 millimeter socket, 10 millimeter socket, 21 millimeter wrench, 17 millimeter wrench, 13 millimeter wrench, pry bar, and a 5 millimeter Allen key. All right, so the first thing you want to do, get the car up in the air and remove the wheels. Now, I'm going to tell you, we're going to start in the front. The reason for that is the front is the hardest one to do. The rear is actually pretty straightforward. The front is more difficult, so we're going to knock that out first. Once you have the wheels off, what you can do over here is disconnect the end links. Use an Allen wrench to hold the center while you remove the nut. With the sway bar end links disconnected, now we're going to work on actually getting to the sway bar. To do that, we have to actually drop the back of the cradle. So what we're going to do now is take off this cross member here, these support braces, this exhaust clamp, and then drop this down to get to the sway bar. And when you move the last bolt here for the brace, that is holding the subframe up. So make sure you put a jack underneath, support the subframe before you remove that bolt. All right, now moving forward right above the control arm is the other rear subframe bolts. Again, remove them from both sides. All right, now we're going to carefully lower down the subframe. And basically, this is going to be hanging from the front struts at this point. All right, so we have the back of our subframe hanging down. Now you can see the brackets that hold the sway bar to that. Now what you want to do here is get a wrench up top and then take the bolts out from the bottom. All right, everything off now, we're gonna slide the sway bar off the back. Now this part, you will kind of have to mess with a little bit and sort of maneuver it and contour it to get it out. There we go. Those of you on the ground are gonna be really cursing us out right now. Ready to begin the installation now of our new sway bar. You're going to install the bushings provided by Whiteline. These do not need to be greased. They go on just as they are, and they're going to be bolted on using the factory brackets. Okay, now ready to put the new bar up into place. Same idea as taking the old one out. You want to fish it a little bit to get it up there. Right now we're going to bolt down the sway bar mount using the original hardware.
What we're going to do now is install these collars provided by Whiteline. What these are going to do is basically stop the bar from moving side to side under load. So what you do now is center the bar and then install the collars. Put the hanger back on the exhaust and we'll put the subframe back into place. All right, now we're going to reinstall the bolts for our subframe. You may have to actually move the subframe just a little bit to get everything lined up. All right, so we're going to torque the front bolts to 85 pound-feet and then the rears to 148. Okay, with the bar mounted, now we're going to move up top here to remove the top bolt so we can get rid of our factory end links. So what we're going to do now is install our adjustable white line end links. Now, the reason these are adjustable, again, is for preload and for ride height. So what you want to do here, we're just going to bolt it in the top for now. Once the car's on the ground, we're going to put it in the bar at a point where it doesn't add any preload. Do the same thing on both sides to set up the bar properly. Alright, so at this point we're going to put the wheels and tires back on the car, we're going to put it on the ground and we're going to make our final adjustment. Since you're not going to really be able to see that, here's what you're going to do when you put it together. You can see you've got two holes. The further hole is going to be the looser setting, the closer hole to the bar itself will be the tighter setting. So you want to figure out where you want to have that set up. And again, like what we're going to do is put the car on the ground, make sure there's zero preload, and then we're going to bolt it into the looser setting and tighten it down. Alright, Brennan's got the bar in place and adjusted properly, now we're going to move on to the rear. All right, so we're back here in the rear, the car up in the air and the wheels off. What we're going to do now is disconnect the sway bar end links at the control arm and then remove the brackets and remove the sway bar. All right, now moving forward, we're going to remove the four bolts that hold on the factory sway bar mounts. Okay, we're ready to install our white line bar. Now you install the bushings first. These bushings go on dry. No grease is needed. Put on the brackets and then install with the factory hardware. Okay, with the bar in place, now we can tighten down the hardware. So just like in the front, white line includes collars for the rear. What you can do is just center the bar, then install the collars. Okay, with the bar mounted, ready to work on the end links. Now, they do include a spacer. You're going to put this into the lower control arm. You will probably have to hammer this into place, but it's going to make the aftermarket end link fit properly.
Okay, we're gonna do is get everything loosely installed here. And again, we're gonna make our final adjustments to our end links with the car on the ground. So the suspension's loaded. So for the rear, we did put it in the second hole, the one that's closest in, which makes it a little bit tighter. We're gonna put the car on the ground, like I said, make our final adjustments to our end links. All right, so Brennan's making the final adjustments. We're gonna tighten down the end links, get the preload that we want, and our installation's finished. For this installation, because we did unbolt the front subframe, you wanna make sure you get the car aligned or at least check your alignment before you drive it. Our white line adjustable sway bar kit is gonna take a car that already handles great and make it handle even better. By getting rid of the body roll, it allows us to put the power down a lot better, plus the adjustability allows for modifications down the road. As far as the installation goes, the front is time consuming, figure about three to four hours, be back on the road in no time.